Good afternoon. Welcome to another edition of the Ohio X Tech Tour. Uh, we are joined by four leaders today from Northeast Ohio and the Akron Canton area. Uh, we'll be talking with them about the interesting, exciting technology and innovation work that's, that's happening uh, throughout the region. I'll be your host today. My name is Chris Berry. I'm the president of Ohio X. Ohio X is a statewide nonprofit organization that uh, is working to raise the profile uh, and bring awareness to incredible technology work that's happening here in the Buckeye State. We're really excited for everyone to join us. Um, before we begin, uh, if you haven't joined us for the tech tour, thank you for being here. For those of you that have maybe been joining every week, thank you so much for that. Uh, the Ohio X Tech Tour presented by HMB is a statewide event series designed to highlight and promote the great technology happening across Ohio and the people who make it happen. Uh, it's a 10-week series with 10 events in 10 different cities, and this is our sixth stop, so we've officially reached the halfway mark. And our goal is we want to learn. We, we hope that uh, people across the state will hear about companies, about organizations, about people today that maybe they didn't know before, and an opportunity to better connect uh, our regional ecosystems. Uh, our guest panelists, who I'll introduce in a moment, come from a diverse uh, skill set of, of organizations and backgrounds, from big corporations to software companies to nonprofits to entrepreneurial endeavors and more. Uh, thank you again for being here. We were hoping to have these in person, but of course, COVID has changed that. And so and hopefully in future years, we'll have a, an in-person component to that too. Uh, finally, before we begin, I want to thank our event series sponsor, HMB. HMB helps mid-market companies and governments innovate and grow using cloud platforms and automation. HMB believes you don't have to have a bottomless IT budget to reach your full potential. If you're interested in learning more about HMB, you can visit their website at hmbnet.com. Without further ado, uh, we'll do a quick round robin, introduce our panelists today, and then we'll get kickstarted the event. Uh, we hope to have everyone out of here by 1259, so thanks for joining us on your lunch hour. But first up, is Dr. Albert Green. Al is the CEO at AMG Consulting Group. He's a CEO and a former CEO of tech companies. He's done tech commercialization throughout his career. Uh, I think, Al, you have like 50 rocket degrees from Stanford and, and other places like that. Uh, but you're also on the board of all sorts of groups throughout Northeast Ohio, Jumpstart, Case Western, Team Neo. But thank you so much for being here. I'm delighted to be here. Thanks a lot, Chris. Um, just a little bit, I think you asked us to give a uh, two minute uh, sort of background bio. So um, as Chris mentioned, um, my training is actually as a physicist. So my PhD is in physics, uh, albeit about 30 years ago. Um, I started my career uh, as a bench scientist, uh, as most physicists do, um, for a large technical services company called Science Applications International Corporation in the Washington DC area. But it's a global company, multi-billion dollar company. Uh, spent about 15 years there, uh, started as a bench scientist, transitioned into various leadership roles. I ran a division, I was chief scientist of a very large organization. Um, left in 2007 uh, to take over as CEO of a company called Kent Displays. It was a small company at that time that was primarily focused on uh, licensing of a class of technologies and liquid crystals. So I took that, uh, the company and that and uh, to really make it a product focused company. Uh, we launched a line of products, a new category of products called e-writers uh, in 2010. Uh, those may, some may be familiar with a line of products called the Boogie Board e-writer. That was our product line. And that was sort of a multi uh, million year, uh, unit per year kind of, of, of product line. Very exciting, interesting experience going from basically a laboratory, university technology, this was a technology that came out of Kent State University, to the shelf at Walmart. That was quite an experience. Uh, ran Kent Displays for uh, about a dozen years uh, and left in 2018 uh, to start my consulting practice. And my consulting practice really focuses on what I do, which is technology innovation and commercialization. Uh, and so that's kind of what I consult with. I consult with large companies, small companies, higher ed, uh, and so on. So that's a little bit about me. Thanks, Chris. Thank you, Al. Appreciate you being here and, and for everything that um, you've been helpful with to Ohio X and, and all the work that you've done for many years in Northeast Ohio. Um, next up is Jessica Greetson, who is the Chief Operating Officer at Squirrels. Squirrels develops wireless presentation software using schools, businesses, and homes. 
Jessica is also a former fighter jet engineer at Lockheed Martin, who is an Ohio boomerang, grew up in Ohio, went to school in Ohio, uh, worked outside of Ohio, and then came back to work at Squirrels. So Jessica, thanks for, thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Um, a little bit about myself. As Chris mentioned, I worked on the F-22 for Lockheed Martin for four years down in Georgia. Um, I ultimately decided that wasn't the best career path for myself and came back to Ohio and sort of fell in love with the area again and stayed. Um, I started working at Squirrels back in 2012 when the company really started to um, bolster and, and find its footing. Um, I started as the sales coordinator, really giving a face to the company. We had 13 employees at the time and had never really surfaced ourselves uh, to the outside world. So I gave a face to the company. Um, after that was established, I transitioned to doing our business intelligence um, for a few years and then sort of found a natural role um, doing sales operations. Um, quickly outgrew just the sales side of the operations and I've been the COO for about a year and a half now. So um, really combining my passion for solving problems, streamlining um, processes. Um, I just like to call myself a business engineer now, um, still solving problems, but focusing on, um, on the business aspect of it. So we do wireless screen sharing and work with um, higher education and business um, and, and really trying to find our space in, in various markets in this pandemic. Thank you, Jessica. Appreciate uh, you joining us today. Next up is Aaron Spring. Aaron is Director of New Ventures at Goodyear in Akron. Uh, I believe an engineer by training and in New Ventures, they are focused on the new, new mobility ecosystem or the future in which mobility will be defined by shared fleets of autonomous connected vehicles. Aaron, thanks for joining us. Thanks a lot, Chris. It's, it's great to be here. Um, great to be here with other leaders from, from the area. Um, and thanks for that introduction. You know, I've been here at Goodyear, actually this is year 16. Everyone tells you it goes by quickly. Um, and it's been really a fun and exciting journey. Started out as an engineer um, as well, doing some material science, science um, work on tires. And then, you know, really got engaged in looking at new technology, advanced technology, and along um, the same timeline, the automotive industry has really started to undergo an amazing transformation, some of which has already happened, some of um, more to come. And so uh, my role here as leading our new ventures team is, you know, as Chris said, that we're really looking at how do we engage with our next generation customers as we move towards um, shared uh, fleets of uh, autonomous vehicles. I hope to see more and more of them um, in the future. You know, we really believe that, hey, this future is already happening somewhere. So let's make sure we engage in it, understand what are those emerging needs and um, build solutions that leverages what Goodyear is great at, but also adds um, the connectivity piece um, and the digital connection for uh, experiences today and in the future that everyone's kind of, kind of looking for. So it's been a lot of fun, you know, um, taking the entire knowledge and background, but then applying a whole new um, uh, type of technology to create those experiences for these for these customers. So um, I could talk about that for a while. So I'll, I'll turn it back to you, Chris. Thanks a lot. Well, thanks for being here, Aaron. And, and I'm, I'm certain we'll get to get to some of that. And I'm excited to hear more um, later later today throughout our program. Um, last but not least is Doug Weintraub, who is the CEO of Bounce Innovation Hub. Bounce is Akron's front door for the collaborative innovation and seeks to engage and educate and grow Ohio's innovation ecosystem. Doug's also a tech entrepreneur himself, an investor, and he spent a career building and running businesses across a variety of industries and sectors. Uh, Doug, thanks so much for joining. Thanks, Chris. Uh, I appreciate the time uh, and being able to communicate what, uh, what's happening here at Bounce. Um, as, uh, as you mentioned, I'm a tech entrepreneur from way back when, and i um, had the opportunity to come back to Akron to uh, help the city with a special project, which is the Bounce Innovation Hub. So the Bounce Innovation Hub is a really unique asset. It's a 300,000 square foot building that uh, lands itself in the BF Goodrich, uh, the old complex here that actually used to build tires. And 
Uh, I'm not an engineer by trade. It sounds like everybody else on the, on the show here is, but uh, I am a CPA. But um, the key here is uh, Bounce is a place, as you mentioned, is the front door of innovation in Akron. So, um, you know, we, we have uh, multiple um, markets that we serve. Tech um, is certainly, tech startups is one of those markets. Uh, we have an incubator and an accelerator program here. We service the non-tech side of business as well through our GROW program. Um, and most of these programs have ongoing curriculums that we offer, whether it's the software accelerator or the mortar program. And then in addition, we have a whole floor that's dedicated to co-working, event space, conference rooms, maker space. So it's really a kind of a full service type of uh, solution that we offer here in, in Akron. And um, we service over, we have over a hundred companies that are located in the building. We have plenty more room so for, for companies that want to relocate that are focused on tech and non-tech. And, um, you know, we're, we're excited about what the future means and, and, uh, and what we can produce here in Akron from a jobs perspective. And, and as these companies grow, and actually uh, graduate and move out. Uh, we're excited to be part of the, uh, the entrepreneurship solution here in Akron. Well, thank you, Doug, and, and thanks for uh, being with us today. Um, before we kind of delve into more of the conversation side of things, uh, I just put a, a comment in the chat section. So anyone on here, panelists, attendees, feel free to hop in there with any questions, comments, or thoughts, and we can work it into the dialogue today. So hopefully, um, if you hear something, by all means, shoot a message and, and we can consider this part of the conversation. But to start, and, and I think Doug, we can probably start with you, um, is, is top of mind for everyone is right now we're in, we're in COVID-19. These, none of us have lived through anything like this. Um, it's in the matter of days, uh, our entire economy shifted and new challenges and opportunities presented themselves. Um, and on this call, we have big businesses, small businesses, co co-working is part of what Bounce does. And I know you all are, are back open and doing things safely. Um, but what has it been like at Bounce and, and navigating through that? And, and for, for those dozens upon dozens of dozens of companies uh, that you all work with every single day? Yeah, it's been, it's been a challenge. Um, you know, we, we, of course, shut down like everybody else did. But we, we opened up when we were allowed to, um, you know, social distance, masks. We reconfigured our first floor generator space. Uh, to try to accommodate, um, you know, all the rules and regulations. So, you know, this, we certainly have seen a slowdown uh, in, the, in the activity on the first floor, but most of our companies are open um, and they're, they're operating under masks and, and socially distanced. And, you know, we have cleaning crews and all those types of things going on. But I'll, I'll tell you, um, being an entrepreneur, you know, working ongoing with several businesses, I think, you know, many businesses have gone through the roof as far as opportunities are concerned. So a lot of them are hired. We've had a tremendous amount of expansion that actually has occurred at Bounce. So companies have added as a result of the COVID, you know, nightmare that's happened. But, um, you know, we're trying to keep things as business as usual as possible here, uh, trying to make it as easy for people to still come in. Because uh, as they say, you can only stay at home so long and walk your dog a million times and take care of the kids. So I think, you know, working together with teams of people is just as important. We have seen a surge of opportunities related to businesses that are not going back to their offices and want to do what I call office lounging, which is come into the bounce, take over a couple conference rooms, you know, for a day and, and work as teams and try to get things back together and then separate, go their, their, their separate ways and then come back together. So we've seen some pretty creative opportunities uh, and we've of course, have, you know, latched onto those and try to you know, help these businesses keep their momentum going. Uh, so. That's great. Thank you. And I think uh, um, that's great to hear that there's expansion opportunities and, and companies, um, some out there, especially technology enabled, there's uh, in difficult in difficult circumstances, there's always opportunities. And, and I agree. My, the, uh, the short commute from my bedroom to my office space at, at my place is, is, get, is very short. And that, and that gets a little old after a certain, certain amount of time. Um, Jessica, I'd be curious from, from uh, what it's been like at Squirrels and how you all have been navigating this. I was visiting uh, your office 
uh, probably just a month or two before all this this happened, um, or at least over the holidays and before we we had even heard of COVID. Um, so what has it been like for for you and your team and and uh, your technology is, is screen sharing. <laughs> so maybe there's been increased opportunity there. Yeah, so um, it's it's definitely been challenging because um, we actually onboarded, we've onboarded four new employees through this, um, through the remote working time, um, two of which were sales reps. Um, and that that is challenging because working for a startup or a small company, because we don't consider ourselves a startup anymore, but uh, working for a small company, a lot of the um, excitement, the passion is built when you're in the same room as your coworkers. Um, and doing sales during this time, one, is incredibly challenging as it is. Um, there's a balance to everything that you're doing. You don't want to come across as um, you know insincere or trying to take advantage of the situation, but you also, have to keep the move the business moving forward um and you get a lot of no's we're waiting until they, we see how things go um etc and so coming into that situation new and not having that that deep connection to the company um can be a little tiring so that's been one of the biggest challenges for us um through this process on the business side of things we actually saw an interesting shift in our product um, revenue so we have um, we have products that allow people to share their screens in a local setting um, that um, you can share your, your iphone to your computer so a lot of people have started using that in their sales demos teachers that are no longer in the classrooms are using that at home um, to teach more in a remote capacity taking some of that functionality they had in their classrooms at home so we've seen an interesting shift from our software as a service product that businesses buy to share their screens um, in a meeting space. Co-working co locations are using that um, and the digital signage aspect of it. And we were shifting more toward the um, individual buyers um, that are using it in their homes. Um, however, on the, on the other side of that, though, we have seen an opportunity for companies that want to um, be able to display their COVID information, um, meeting room capacity, best practices for their businesses, the, whatever um, policies they've put in place in a wireless manner. And since that is very dynamic and changes, you know, pretty much daily or weekly, right now it's nice to be able to do that from a digital capacity from one centralized portal. Um, so if you were to walk into a business, you would know okay, I can only put five people in this conference room, um, but if something changes tomorrow, you can update that very quickly to say, okay, we only want three people in this conference room. Um, so it's made us shift sort of our market focus um, and how we're, we're positioning things, but um, it's been an interesting um, shift also from a, from a revenue standpoint. Luckily, we were able to weather the storm because of our diverse portfolio um, and being able to play in those different markets, but it's definitely had its challenges. Al, what are, what are you seeing with um, some of the businesses, and I know you work with a really um, wide range, you mentioned things like higher ed and big co's and, and all, probably a, a bunch of others, um, but what has it been like and, and what are you seeing from your colleagues and also uh, your career has been across the United States. And so I'd be curious of how other regions, other states, other tech ecosystems are, have been handling things. Yeah, okay, interesting. Yeah, so um, the first thing I would say is, um, you know, as the sort of the, this morning on a call uh, at a board meeting, um, you know, a person made the comment that, um, you know, the last six months has been like 10 years. So it's like dog years. I mean, in terms of, of how many things have changed in this forced experiment that we're going on, that we're having right now. And I think that, that you know, with every radical change like that, it presents opportunities for sure. Um, and I, I think um, that here in Northeast Ohio in particular, one of the things I'm excited about seeing is that, um, you know, there's sort of two classes of companies that you see, or, or not even companies, organizations. There are organizations that are saying right now, well, let me just pump the brakes. Let me just, you know, as, as Jessica said, let me just hold off and let's see how things blow over and how things, you know, end up. And there's other organizations that are saying pedal to the metal. You know, now is our chance to redefine ourselves or do something different or capture new customers. 
And I think when you look across the innovation ecosystem, and I think Doug may, may be seeing something similar, is that certainly from, from for example, the Cleveland Innovation Project, um, which is a massive activity going on right now in Northeast Ohio around our assets and thought leadership and where should we make our big bets. And, and I'm pleased to hear to, and to see that most folks, I'm on the steering committee of that, most folks are really in the pedal to the metal mode. I mean, they're saying, look, Northeast Ohio and, and Ohio in general has the opportunity to really define itself uh, or redefine itself in this rapidly changing environment. And, and you, you know, um, you know, many folks say that, that, that the state of Ohio's response to, 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 to COVID has been quite good in general. Um, and folks are looking to, to capitalize on that. So I think that's very, very exciting. Um, the other thing, I, the observation I would make, just anecdotal stuff, um, is that, um, you know, uh, because nowadays, you know, the video conferencing, like what we're doing here, has become much more accepted. It's not even accepted, it's the norm right now. I mean, it, it is, that's how you meet people. You know, the efficiency of being able to have multiple meetings in person, if you will, as close as you can to get in person, 2D rather than 3D, it, it really has gone up. I mean, you know, if I were, if this was the normal business as usual, I would have been in, you know, Cleveland this morning, I would have been back somewhere else for, for, for this event and then up at Jumpstar for another board meeting and then another meeting in Cleveland. I mean, it would just have not been possible. And so, you know, the, what I see is that people, what you would normally say, okay, let's get together. And the, the default is you're going to get together in person. Well, that's three months out because, you know, there's, you got to buy tickets, you got to coordinate schedule. And nowadays it's just, you know, jump on a Zoom call. And, and I think that, that from an efficiency standpoint, that really has gone up. Now, what Jessica said is I 100% agree with, which is, you know, I ran a mid-sized company. I had about 100 employees. And, um, and you know, what Jessica said is much of the enthusiasm, particularly for an innovation-based business, happens at the, the water cooler kind of, of, or the coffee pot conversations. And, and I think the challenge for us moving forward is the new norm is going to be some mixture of in person versus versus you know virtual, and I don't think it's just because of, of contagious disease. It's going to be because workers are going to say, "Look, I can just as efficiently do this for the reasons I described as as doing it in person." So I think that you're going to have some blended norm. But I think what you have to be very careful about is how you have to figure out a way to capture that water cooler kind of conversation. And I think that there are opportunities in new businesses that figure out ways to do that virtually because, because what happens is, you know, you run into someone and it's, oh, by the way, and it tickles your memory. And so you engage in a conversation and there's a breakthrough that happens. And it's, you know, I've always said when I was running Kent Displays, you know, it's hard to schedule innovation. You know, it's hard to schedule inventions. And the water cooler conversations were kind of what would, would motivate those kinds of things. So I think there's many challenges, but, but there's many opportunities. I'll leave you with one last thought, then I'll, then I'll hand it back. Um, you know, I think one of the things that was interesting um, was, was how quickly technology and innovation can creep up on you. And, and Aaron made the point about autonomous vehicles. And and I remember sitting in a conversation, it was some board meeting where we're, we were talking about, you know, there's this, a lot of discussions about uh, this innovation era that people are talking about in Cleveland. And the, and the discussion moved to, well, you know, you know okay, we're gonna, there's going to be a building here and there's going to be a parking lot over there. And I'm sitting there thinking, you know, by the time this stuff gets built, parking garages are going to be located across town because it can be aut autonomous vehicles that are gonna be shared among multiple people. And so worrying about people driving up and parking right next to, to, to where they work or where they're meeting, ain't gonna be an issue. That car is gonna drop you off, then it's gonna go pick up someone else and drop them off. And, and then when you're ready to go home, another car is gonna show up and, and, and pick you up. So those are the kinds of innovations that creep up on you. And we have to make sure that we, get, that we can kind of stay ahead of those things. So I'll hand it back to you. I've said enough. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Al. And we'll get to, um, we'll get to the innovations because you mentioned 
cars and, and autonomous driving, which I'm sure Aaron has a ton to add on, but um, kind of st still a bit on this topic, uh, Jessica, I'd be curious of, of how as a, a, a senior leader at a company through some of this work from home, one that does do innovation and one is that is building new products. What, what were some ways that you and the team and leadership at Squirrels were, were ensuring that not just the day to day was happening, but that, team members are still out there thinking and building because you don't have that whiteboard session necessarily. Um, or maybe it's at this point, maybe it's a little less often than it normally has been. And there aren't those collusions at, at water coolers or over lunch where just things will randomly pop up. So I'd be curious for the leaders on here, you know, Jessica, we'll start with you. What perhaps you all did during that time to, to increase that innovation. So it's, um, it's, it's very uh, ironic that Al hit the, the um, nail on the head right there with, um, we just had a big meeting about that yesterday. Um, our dev team and, and specifically some of our um, junior developers are struggling to, to get that knowledge transfer from our senior developers. Um, everyone has a full docket of work right now, it, and it's challenging to say, hey, can I get 15 minutes? Um, I struggle with that. I have an, a very open door policy at my office. People are constantly walking in and talking to me. Um, it's a little bit harder when I'm here because I'm on meeting after meeting after meeting um, where I have to schedule that time. It feels less natural. Um, you know, we, we have to make sure we're prepared because there's only 15 minutes versus, hey, someone can come in my office, sit on my couch and have more of a therapeutic session. Um, so that has been one of the challenges. We've, we've felt that um, from across, um, actually, every department across the company, we are feeling it. Um, the sales team, you know, we have complementary uh, skill sets from, from every person on our team. And if we could be in a room, that those skill sets would sort of transfer. So we're, we're discussing various ways um, to, to help this problem. Um, a handful of the teams have talked about having people go into the office or um, you know, at a socially distance um, space. So luckily our office, because we are small, um, we have a lot of areas that are conducive to that. We have big open um, collaborative spaces, similar to what you would probably find at Bounce. Um, so that's a nice option. I, I definitely think it's a great option for the larger companies that maybe don't have the ability to open their offices in any capacity to use a co-working space um, where they can um, sort of foster that team building and, and that camaraderie, um, that knowledge transfer. So we haven't solved that problem actually, and we're, we're in the, the process of trying to figure it out. Um, we made the joke yesterday that we'll figure it out the day before um, everything opens up again. <laughs> we can, we can uh, start having you know, a more mixed environment. So it, it is challenging. We, we do a weekly stand up. Um, it's sort of an all hands fairly informal, but each team will sort of give an update. The goal of that being that, you know, everyone sort of knows what's going on in the company. Um, we've done a monthly newsletter as well, which seems to really help um, people better understand what's going on in other departments, gives, you know, an employee spotlight. There's some feel good stuff in there. Um, we've added a handful of Slack channels to sort of help with that, um, with that collaboration. But um, when you have introverts that are in, in their preferred space, um, it, it's, it's certainly challenging. So we're still trying to navigate those waters. Jessica, you can come over to Bounce any day and, and bring your office and office lounge for a day and, and use all the facilities here. We're, we're welcome to help you with that. Yeah, well, uh, then I'll try to sell you Ditto. And so we'll, we'll work together on it. Wonderful. <laughs> Doug, I saw you nodding your head at a, at a few points. Curious if you've seen some interesting or creative ways that some of the, the bounce portfolio companies have been navigating well, some of this. I wanted to actually say I, it's sitting here and being, in, we were here uh, throughout the whole pandemic because we were essential. So there was a lot of businesses that were operating under that rule. So we have a, um, a hydroponic lettuce, basil, microgreen growing operation and they were underway, although the restaurants were closed, they were servicing grocery stores. We also had a bunch of companies that pivoted. One of the companies, Nelson Innovation, which did bandaging, a brand new startup, and they literally pivoted to PPE and literally have funded their raise based on just that move. So it was, it's incredibly amazing to see the pivots, how fast and furious some of the companies made 
to change their business overnight. Now, as far as the communication tools, you know, it's the standard type stuff. We use Teams, uh, the Slack was another one. Um, and we really didn't, it was interesting because a lot of our programs are face-to-face. -face. When you're an entrepreneurial uh, service organization, you need that get together. How do you communicate, you know, that water cooler talk or the coffee talk or whatever you want to call it. We had to switch to everything virtual and um, we successfully launched a couple programs from scratch, our mortar program, which is the non-tech program, um, which services, uh, you know, some of the challenged businesses here in town. Um, our first cohort launched um, a couple months ago, about a month ago, and uh, there's 15 people. Um, and, uh, you know, I went in on the first session, a couple of the, the, the women that are in this program had their babies on their laps. Uh, while they were trying to figure out how to build a business. So it was pretty exciting from my perspective to see that. And people will do whatever is necessary to, you know, kind of advance their career and advance their opportunities. So, um, you know, without having these Zooms and Teams and all those types of things, you know, it would have ground to a halt. So thank God for th that type of technology. Yeah, thank you, Doug. And, and Aaron, I would be curious for, for you and your work at Goodyear during this time, because one, you work at a, a multinational corporate, do work all across mm -hmm. the world, sell across the world, but then you're in new ventures. So you have the big co and you have the startup kind of, I'm sure, mentality and, and interacting with that. Um, so so what, have, what has these past few weeks and months been like for you and the team? Yeah, so it's, it's a lot of what um, Doug and Jessica said, you know, definitely resonates, um, you know, initially, you know, earlier, all, all remote, I think, um, based on, you know, almost being thrown into that and required to use the tools that we have, I think we've um, been able to use Teams and Zoom and Slack and other things kind of to the fullest. Um, and I've actually seen some improvements just with respect to, uh, hey, now, like, if I want to get a hold of someone, it's very natural just to meet, reach out over Teams really quickly and not necessarily set up a meeting. Um, I think also, um, you know, working kind of from anywhere gives some more flexibility um, to when you need to get your, your work done throughout the way throughout the day um, and, and managing that with, you know, other personal obligations. So I think we've seen some, some benefits on um, adding and using some of the tools to the fullest. I think, you know, where, where we're at right now, I'm actually in, in the office today, we're really looking at kind of that hybrid model. You know, if, if we put things in place so that people can come to the office if they, if they need to um, meet with each other um, at social distance with masks, um, with the proper sanitation, et cetera. So if we feel that there is a need that people need to get together, work through something, collaborate, um, definitely we'll do that in the safest way possible. And then I think another big piece of this is maybe always making sure you keep that connection with, with your customer. Um, and whether you need to do that in person or even just do that on a more regular basis to understand, hey, how are their businesses going? Um, what's changing? How are they pivoting? Can you pivot as well um, to, to support um, what's going on in, in the world? And I think that was a really um, important part, whether it's over video or um, we've had some instances, you know, for really business essential um, um, type work, you know, we have to go out of the office and, and get the work done in the safest way we can. Thank you, Aaron. Um, one of the, the most interesting things that I've enjoyed about this tech tour series is we're, we're learning and finding out what different cities and regions do really incredibly well. Uh, last week we were in Cincinnati and we were hearing about this startup, Startup Cincy movement that they've built over 10 or 15 years or so. Before that, we were in Dayton and heard a, a bunch of information about uh, the role Wright-Patterson Air Force Base and the defense sector and industry play in Dayton. Um, when, when I think of Akron, Canton, that part of Northeast Ohio, uh, it's, it's, you know, rubber capital of the world and it's companies like Goodyear. Um, and Al, you were mentioning a bit ago about the potential for autonomous vehicles just picking you up and then some of these um, rapid technology shifts. Um, so I would love to examine that a little bit more. And Aaron, maybe if you could share just some of the work that you all are doing at New Ventures um, and what that looks like, because 
not only is that, I mean, the, the smartest people in the world, Silicon Valley, but it, there's incredible work happening in Akron in Northeast Ohio, um, which is, 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 an, is an awesome story. So I'd love to hear more about uh, what you all are working on at Goodyear that I'm sure that you can sh share about. <laughs> Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Chris. And I, I think as we kind of look to the future, it's really about, um, you know, still continuing to make great products and looking at um, how do we add new technologies and features to really meet the needs of those um, advanced, um, advanced technology companies. So, you know, you know, one of the, the big pieces that we're working on, you might see here and there in the news is, you know, is how do we... Um, ensure that our, our product is connected as well. So working um, very diligently on um, putting more sensing capabilities into tires. And as you can imagine, it's not always trivial to add something into a, a, a product that undergoes the forces that a tire does on a regular basis. Um, and being able to collect data and information from that product and really add value, whether it's for a fleet manager or even um, integrating it into an autonomous um, vehicle system to improve their overall safety. Um, so a, a core strategy for us now and, and going forward, and really a lot of it getting developed right here in, in Northeast Ohio. So combining you know, some of that great, um, techno great um, tire technology in the background but then adding what's required from a digital perspective. Um, so that's a big piece of it. And I think it, the other thing I'll add um, is, you know, continue to look at how can our products and solutions, you know, be more and more sustainable in the future. So really looking at um, that, our overall value chain, looking at um, reusable materials, materials from natural sources, um, to improve our on our sustainability journey. Great, thank you, and uh, that was really interesting. And, and I've I've enjoyed reading and following, especially after uh, the announcement of of new ventures. Probably what about a year or so ago at this point. Right, it's been about um, about two years now, okay, two and years. I think right. one of the big things that we did add at the beginning of this year is um, really making a commitment um, to advanced technology and to this future of mobility um, with our Goodyear Venture um, Fund that we launched early this year, a way for us to engage with startups, really understand and learn and also put some skin in the game. Thank you. Um, another topic that, that I'd love for this, this group to, to delve into, and I know there's a lot of interesting perspectives, but uh, Al, we can start with you. Um, things like diversity, equity, and inclusion and how it relates to the new norm um, it, it's uh, something that all businesses are, are hopefully have at the top of their mind and um, making sure that we're creating opportunities for, for, for everyone. And I know, Doug, you and the team at Bounce have been working on a bunch of stuff, too, um, to give all people in Akron and Summit County and, and, the, and the region opportunities. But, Al, do you want to maybe uh, kickstart that and touch on a few points that you may have? Yeah, sure. I'd be delighted to, to, to do so. I mean, I, I think... Um, one of the things that that has been interesting is that um, that you know bef when when people talk about um, sort of digital equity, for example, um, you know before it was a statement that well you know if you couldn't if you didn't have you know good bandwidth or you didn't have a good internet connection, you know you couldn't buy something on Amazon. I mean you were kind of going to get shut out of the e-commerce you know economy, which was which is a problem, um, but. But nowadays, um, it, you know, I think that the, the risk and the challenge that we have is that if we're not careful, we can end up in a society that is even, that, that the, the have and the have nots are, it's, it's exponentially bigger, the separation. Because, you know, if you, you know, we take, we take it for granted that, you know, you know, in all of our conversations, well, I'll just jump on Zoom, okay? Uh, and we'll have all these, you know, this is my fifth Zoom call. I mean, and, and so that, that's great. I mean, my kids are, are, are not in school right now. They're both in high school uh, and they're doing all kinds of stuff. And so, you know, there's a high bandwidth requirement in the, in the home. And, but nowadays, if you don't have bandwidth, you can't participate in the economy. I mean, it's, it's, 
it's really that serious. And, and we have to make sure that, 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 that as we move towards the new norm, that we are, that we take into consideration the fact that, that, that digital equity is going to be super important because, you know, I always come down to the argument that the not enough bodies argument. I mean, you know, when you look at, 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 that Ohio and Northeast Ohio, which, which, you know, frankly speaking, has struggled with, with, with population growth. I mean, you can't grow the economy if you don't have enough people. And it's gotten to the place where, where um, essentially people recognize and understand that we have to include people that have historically not been included in order to grow the economy, because there's not enough bodies if you don't, if you don't do that. And so, you know, I think that we just have to be cognizant of the fact that this is going to be super important moving forward, that, that people are able to participate and have the tools to participate in these kinds of, in this kind of digital environment. I'm happy to see that a lot of the, the organizations, the groups that I'm involved in are recognizing that. Thank you, Al. Um, I was, before even COVID, I, I had a, a really eye-opening conversation with a superintendent at a school district where about half of their students didn't have, so half of the population uh, within this district didn't have access to high quality, um, really high speed internet. And, and that, you know, if that's half the population, that's not just kids, but that's the families that can't work from home. That's teachers, that's, that's, that's adult populations too, because the kids live with, with, live with their parents. Um, and so I, I can only imagine, I think the number is around a million Ohioans lack access. And for a state of 11 and a half or so million people, that's a, that's a big number. And, and I think you're absolutely right that um, if you don't have access to, you know, I'm, I'm wired up and I tested my internet before this and it was, you know, it was quick, but that's, that's something that not everyone has access to. And, and it's a big thing. Yeah, yeah please. Chris, Chris, you know, and you know, if for those of you that have had the, the, the struggle, which happened to me recently, where my inner, where my line was cut, yep. you know, um, doing some landscaping work and my line got cut and you realize how much it's like, you're blind, literally. I mean, you know, and luckily I was able to hotspot off of a phone, but imagine if you didn't have that, you know, you're, 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 you're like in a cave, you know, and so it's just, it's just got to keep that, those sorts of things in mind. Doug, um, I know Bounce has, has done a lot around DEI work yep. um, and, and introducing some new programs, initiatives, hires even. Um, mind sharing what, what you all have been sure. up to with that? We, uh, you know, last year, so this is way before COVID, way before all the other issues that have occurred in our society uh, happened, we, we launched a program called GROW, which actually worked on a study that was done called Elevate Akron, where uh, the black community in, in town didn't really have the opportunity to participate in the growth. And, and we just found that unacceptable. And we launched a number of programs, the Aspiring Entrepreneurial Program. We brought a program from Cincinnati called Mortar, which is a 15 work, 15 week program. And then we call the Next Level Entrepreneurial Program as well. We opened the facility up to non-tech businesses with the idea that, you know, people can use our facility for multiple ways and not just based on what historically was some of the funding. So I mentioned this one program, Mortar, there was 15 participants, 14 black women and one um, white male that was uh, in the program. So there's a huge need in our community and we're trying to fulfill that. And uh, our next Mortar program launches next week. And we basically have these programs filled up um, to maximum capacity. And we actually had to launch them electronically via Zoom and then, um, so it took us a, a, a period of time to get that going, and we we miss out on the you know the personal connection, but it, it's definitely a need in our community, and we're excited to be able to provide that. And it was well before a lot of people decided that they were going to change their offerings or their programs. So we're pretty proud of the fact that it was for us. It was just business as usual, and I think it's made a big difference. I mean, the non-tech part of Akron. Uh, and needs help, and, and we were there to, to offer that help. So we've added, we added four staff to that program, uh, which is fully fun uh, funded by the foundations in town, um, which we're really excited about as well. So um, we're servicing a whole different group of people 
which is really why it's the, the need and the number of businesses here in balance has just skyrocketed. And it's interesting to also see the combination and connection between tech and non-tech businesses. Because a lot of the tech businesses can learn some things from the non-tech businesses and vice versa. So we're seeing some interesting dynamics that have gone on. If, if we had the, the first floor open at full capacity, it, it would have been really exciting to see people sitting at a table co-working that are working on a maybe a barbershop project at the same time that they're working on a software project. And I think that's what gives um, the whole concept of diversity and inclusion a, a, a new face here, at least here in Akron. And you've got the sewing machine going in the background. We have the sewing machine, the maker space. Yeah. We have all that stuff going on here. I mean, there's really, it's a one-stop shop. That's great. Well, thank you, Doug. And, and Jessica, I'd be, um, I know education and is, is something that you have a passion in and opening up opportunities for people to learn about technology careers and, and others. Um, but also from, a, from a, an employer who has to hire and has to find that type of, you know, top tech talent uh, to come to work for you all at Squirrels and, and help build your products and sell it across the world. Um, so curious to some of those, I know you've done some work in the education space, but what you're seeing both on, on that side of, of the volunteering, but then also um, from, the, from the employer end. Yeah, so um, one of the things that Al said is, I think um, one of the scariest things for me as someone that's passionate about education and the future of what we're doing is, is that gap. Um, I was actually having a conversation with my husband about this last night and how I'm not sure that enough people take that seriously enough that um, the kids that are the most at risk are even further at risk now because of the, re the lack of resources that are available, um, the inability to get an internet or have an internet connection, um, the children that are starving that don't have the ability to go to school and that's their one safe place. Um, so I'm in my personal time, you know, aside of trying to have a newborn, um, I'm trying to figure out ways to help facilitate those, those children, um, whether it's a financial donation, um, having, helping with the resources. One of my best friends is the director of curriculum at a local school. And so we've been talking about um, in her district, what they're trying to do. Fortunately enough, her district doesn't have a lot of those children, um, but it's a very real, very real situation um, and, and trying to help bridge that gap. So um, at a company level though, we have taken um, our, our HR staff and the management staff, um, we've reached out to local universities to figure out how we can work better with some of the programs that they have. Um, I've reached out to a handful of my connections at local high schools. I work closely with Akron Public Schools in their um, Akron Public Schools just rolled out uh, career readiness paths. Um, so I sit on their board to help their students be the most prepared for entering the workspace directly from, from high school. So the goal of that program is to help their students either um, be prepared for college or be prepared to enter the workspace. And sort of what's important in those situations, how we best prepare them, whether it's from a technical standpoint on, you could take a support role um, and work in customer success and customer service, or you can go and help from an administrative standpoint, a business standpoint, and really honing in on those skills. Um, I think that when we look at the various areas in the Akron Canton area, there are opportunities to sort of bring to light um, some of the non-traditional paths um, and work in those with those schools that are, you know, trying to push that forward. So um, we're really trying to focus on partnering with, um, like I said, the groups um, at those um, at the university level that may may have um, focusing on that minority um, aspect of it. Sorry, I just completely lost my train of thought. But that, that's sort of where we're going from a personal standpoint and from a professional standpoint, um, exploring the avenues from K-12 all the way through college. Thank you, Jessica. Um, Aaron, curious if any of the work at, at, at Goodyear um, you'd be able to share. And, and also just from a, a perspective of, I don't know the numbers, but I would have to think that the Goodyear is one of, if not the largest employers in the Akron Summit County area, um, which requires for, for the work you all do. I mean, that's everything from tech to engineers to product, everything. So curious what you might have to add. 
Yeah, um, right, <clears throat> for sure. So, you know, we, we take it um, very seriously from a diversity and inclusion perspective. Um, it's an area we spend a lot of time and focus on um, from, you know, making sure that we're able, as we even bring um, people kind of in through the entry level positions, making sure we have a very diverse um, slate of candidates, which involves, you know, making sure that we're reaching out to the right um, types of um, programs to get that diversity and ensure that we have that diverse slate as we add new team members. And then also make sure that we're able to develop um, people's careers with you know, diversity and inclusion in mind. I'll tell you from, you know, I think we all see um, the, you know, positive benefits of bringing people together who have different perspectives, um, can bring different ideas to the table and, and really solve problems in a lot of different ways. It just makes for a, a better overall solution. So, you know, from a, from a leadership standpoint and from Goodyear, um, a prime area that we're focused on and then, you know, secondly, as we look at reaching out to the community, you know, Goodyear does that in a lot of different ways. One that I'll highlight is we have um, a pretty big focus on um, supporting STEM education through a variety of programs. Um, you know, one thing we do specifically, and, and unfortunately we weren't able to do it because it's typically in, in April of each year, but, you know, we have a STEM career day, middle school, high schoolers, you know, free, free to come, um, get the opportunity to connect with professionals in the space, but also just start to build that love for science and engineering through hands-on activities, um, mentoring with um, professionals, and, you know, really seeing what, uh, what, it, what it takes to kind of get involved um, in, in STEM. So something that Goodyear um, can constantly year over year um, is trying to build throughout the community. Great. Thank you, Aaron. Um, and as we wrap up, uh, we just have a few moments left. We'll do a quick round table, uh, round robin. We'll start with you, Al. Um, kind of two parts. One is uh, if people are visiting Akron, Canton, you're in Kent, but all over, uh, where, where, where are you recommending they, they go grab a bite to eat or coffee or your, your favorite spot to take people when they're visiting in town? And then just any, any final quick hit or prediction thought about um, the potential for technology in, in, in your region that you're seeing that might be exciting? Wow, tough questions. Um, <laughs> let's see. Um, so, uh, you know, there's a place in Cuyahoga I like. It's called Golden Dragon. It, they, it's a sushi restaurant, which I, which I like a lot. Um, although nowadays, ain't a lot of eating out going on. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's pretty tough. There's a lot of great fall places as you go uh, closer to Cleveland. What was the second part of the question, if you can, again? Uh, just any quick final final thoughts that you want to share with the group before we uh, we head out for the day? Yeah, I, I think that that you know we're in an inflection point, and and you know they said never waste a good crisis, and um, you know I would I would second that. I think that that we have a chance to redefine ourselves, uh, and I'm happy to see that that people have, as far as I can tell, have embraced that, and. And, you know, again, don't waste a good crisis. We, sh we can come out way stronger than we were before in Northeast Ohio. Thank you, Al. Jessica? Uh, so my, one of my favorite areas uh, or places to go in the area, um, any of the Dravasi properties. Um, so La Piazza is a little less formal. You can play some bocce, drink some wine slushies, uh, have little pizzas. Uh, there's also Twisted Olive and Green that sits right on one of the one of the parks. You can take your wine outside, um, walk around, or you know they have uh, some locally drafted beers there as well. Um, but everything's local. The properties are beautiful. They have a little hotel that they have on the main Gervasi property. You can walk through the vineyards. Um, they just added a still house. So love their Gervasi properties. Um, I also really like wine, so that might help as well. Um, and then um, I, I kind of agree with everything that um, Al is saying from a, from a tech perspective. Um, there, there's a lot of opportunity to be innovative, um, but mostly from the people side. Uh, I really am, I, I care a lot about the people, um, and I think this has really given an opportunity for everyone to find a better life balance, 
Um, and hopefully larger companies that, or, or companies in, of any size that um, had, you know, pretty strict rules about you must be in your seat from nine to five. I hope the biggest takeaway from here is that flexibility um, produces happier employees. Um, we've, we, I firmly believe that that was one of the biggest initiatives that I took on when I became COO is allowing that flexibility, that trust. Um, and, and hopefully a lot of companies take that away because I, I think a lot of people are happier now. They get to see their kids more. Um, maybe, you know, not such the full extreme, but yeah. <laughs> um, I'll say maybe a little. I have, a, I have a lot of friends that are ready to go back to the office, but Finding that balance, I think, will uh, will help everyone, you know, enjoy the finer things in life and not be so stuck to the grind. Thank you, Jessica. Uh, Aaron? Yeah, thanks. So, um, so one of my favorite places, I'll start there, to go, and maybe you guys can make a day out of it, especially in our social distance world, is um, Lock 15 Brewing. They have a great outdoor patio. And then it also goes right by the towpath. So, you know, bring your bikes. Um, if you need any bike repair, there's a great bike shop at um, North Side. Um, so you can get a tune up, hop on the trail, and then finish the day um, with, with a snack out on, on the patio. So um, that actually sounds like maybe I should do that this weekend. But anyways, um, and then, you know, I, I think there's just a, a lot of great opportunity in, in the area. Um, you know, I've I'm a transplant, lived here for, you know, over, over 10 years now. And I think, you know, there's a lot out there to do. There's a lot of great people. And I think, um, you know, echoing the other comments, kind of seizing, seizing the day and using this as an opportunity to kind of leverage our, our grassroots um, and combine it with some advanced technology to make some great solutions and, and build, up, build up the region. Um, so appreciate um, the opportunity to be in the call today. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, Doug? Well, you know, down here at Canal Place, we're on the other side of Akron. Uh, the Arche Brewery just opened up, which is actually in the old BF Goodrich complex and also Missing Falls Brewery. So um, if we get one more, and I think it's open container, we can walk all over the place and probably bring the beer right into, uh, into Bounce. That's why you bring your bike, right? And then you can, you can ride your bike all the way down that towpath from one end of right. Akron all the way down. So you can just spend the day drinking and riding your bikes. Um, but, uh, you know, look, Bounce is open for business. There's places to, you know, a different format than most offices uh, that are out there. And, you know, we welcome you to just come in and try it. Um, just mention my name and they'll let you through the doors without buying a pass and you can try it out and see what you think. Um, you know, I think the office lounging, the office idea of co-working is a unique alternative to just sitting at home with the dog and, and the kids and all that kind of stuff. And it doesn't have to be every day. It could be just a couple of days. And we're glad to be here. We're glad to, to have and be around all the activity in Akron. I think there's a lot going on here in this town. Um, you know, I've, I've been in Akron my whole life. And uh, I think it's exciting. I mean, I remember the days when they were making tires and, and now we're making technology. So uh, Aaron is a perfect example of what Goodyear has seen and, and how they're changing their business. And so we're glad to be here um, and operating our facility to, uh, to service entrepreneurs in Akron. Well, that's great. Thank you, Doug. And uh, if that tagline hasn't been taken by the uh, by either Bounce or the Chambers up there of of making tires and making technology, um, I think that's a that's a great way to end it. So, uh, thank you everyone for joining today. This was a great conversation. I really enjoyed it. Um, have have a, a few places on my list when I'm uh, back visiting the Akron area to try out. Um, and I've been to Bounce before, so uh, I, can, I can attest to it. It's a good, great place to, to do some work. Uh, but thank you, everyone, for joining. Um, this has been great. Uh, thank you to HMB for being our sponsor of this Tech Tour series. You can visit their website at hmbnet.com. It's hmbnet.com. Uh, we'll see everyone next week. We have, I believe, uh, a couple more weeks of this. So we're, we're going to different cities. We still have Ashland and Portsmouth and Dublin and Toledo up. Um, so it's been so much fun to hear the diversity um, of all Ohio cities and the great tech work happening. So thank you to everyone for joining and thank you, special thank you to our, our four panelists today. Appreciate everyone for being here. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.